Hi, welcome to All Brands After Hours with me, Courtney Dowdit. Welcome to the show where you usually hang out and craft together. However, today we will be going over how to cut fabric with your brother's scan and cut. Let's do it. So today we're going to go over fabric. How to cut fabric in your scan and cut, what the different fabrics that you can cut in your scan and cut, and different things that I recommend, tips and tricks. So let's just jump straight into it. So I have here, let's see, a piece of regular fabric. Nothing special about this, it's just a cotton fabric. Now this is very thin, you can do thicker fabrics if you want. So think um, like a puffy foam. Uh, that's a three millimeter thickness. If it can fit three millimeters in there, I'm gonna try it. So you might not have a cotton fabric that's three millimeter thickness, but you might have a wool or a flannel of some sort that's thick. As long as it's under that three millimeter thickness, you're good to put it in your machine. So this is just a regular cotton fabric. Do you have to treat your fabric to put into the scan and cut? No, you don't, but you can if you want. Um, so I could just put this regular piece of cotton fabric in my machine and it will cut it out just fine, but say I'm doing uh, an applique and I want to put something like a, a wonder under or heat and bond or something like that. This is just what this is. So it's like a paper material with the gluey part on the part of it. So I've treated this material with the heat and bond light on there if I wanted to do my applique. So think of it this way. If I knew that I was going to use some fabric on an applique and I needed to cut it out so I could use the Brothers Gannon cut to cut out my applique, well, why wouldn't I treat it before I, you know, put it in my machine? Because then my machine could cut through, not even the paper backing, but the fabric, cut through them both. And now I've got a completed piece that it's ready just to peel off the paper and put on whatever I'm putting my applique on, a shirt, a quilt, whatever. So it, it doesn't make sense to make your life harder, not harder, but make you do double work, you know, might as well just do it all in the machine. So you could do that, treat a fabric. Whenever you're doing this, what I tell people is to put the fabric side down on your fabric mat. Um, or if you have a CM model, you do a, a standard mat with a high tack support sheet. Um, but if you have an SDX model, then you're going to just use your fabric mat, the gold one. So you'd put fabric side down on your fabric mat and cut. Why do we do that? Well, if I'm going to use it with paper, with the paper backing, I'm going to have to use the blue mat and put paper side down, which it's less sticky. Why would I want to possibly have it move or something like that? So I'm going to use my stickiest mat, which is my fabric mat, fabric side down. So I know it's holding it on there and I'm going to get a really nice cut. If the paper slips a little bit, who cares? I mean, if you've treated it on there, it's not going to slip on, you know, as much, but I'd rather the paper get a little messed up than my fabric that's going on my applique. So fabric side down on your fabric mat, which your fabric mat looks like this. It's gold or tan, whatever they want to call it. This is your fabric mat. So I would do fabric mat, fabric side down, paper side up. If you've treated it with a heat and bond wonder under or something like that. If you have a CM model, which if you don't have a fabric mat, you could just take the standard mat and put what is called a high tack support sheet on it that makes it super sticky um, and do your fabric that way. But the fabric mat is just so easy. It's so good. I love it. So fabric side down. So if that's if you've got treated fabric. Um, now you can of course, let me reach over. I have, it, I have it sitting just out of frame. Um, it's called Terial Magic. Terial Magic is if you want to treat your fabric to have like a like stronger, starchier uh, feel to it. So Terial Magic uh, washes out. So say I wanted to cut out a bunch of stuff. Like I travel around, of course, to different shows um, like EEM. If you haven't signed up for EEM, I will be there teaching a class. I think it's Cutting Up with Courtney. Um, if you haven't signed up for that class, if you're coming to EEM, I think, I don't remember the details. I'm going to pop them up on screen. So, um, if you're coming to EEM, I will be there teaching a class and I'll also be in the booth the whole time. So come say hi to me. Anyways, so I'm traveling around all these shows. Well, I want, 
my material not to fray because of course I'm over time you know traveling with it it's in my bag and stuff I'm going to treat it material magic because it's going to prevent it from fraying as much I treated this fabric years ago and I'm still using it and there's a bit of fraying but it's because I've been traveling around with it like crazy so anyways so if you wanted to treat your fabric um and have it be a little stiffer and maybe easier to work with during your project but at the end you want that to come out and you don't want it to stay like that material magic is awesome because it's just going to completely wash out and then it's going to just feel like the regular fabric again it's not going to be this stiff like literally it kind of just kind of just stands on her own <laughs> she's stiff but if i did that to like my regular piece of cotton fabric like she's not she's not standing up at all like she's going to flop down so that's what's awesome about material magic is that it gives that stiffness so if you're wanting something like that that's great but the scanning cut can cut through this like nothing it, it doesn't even phase it um so again you can treat your fabric before it goes in the machine it doesn't matter what you treat it with the machine doesn't care as long as it's under that three millimeter thickness to go through so um uh, another thing that people don't realize is cork fabric this is just a fabric this is just plain cork fabric but it's under that three millimeter thickness so i can do it easily in my machine and i treat it like fabric whenever i put it in my machine all right so let's go over what blades we're going to use this over here um all right you have two different options with your blades so if you have an sdx model you have you're usually familiar with this one right here this is the tan blade the tan blade is thought to be like your your um fabric scissors so you think you have your regular scissors and then you have your fabric scissors these are your fabric scissors so if i'm just going to do a plain piece of cotton material well i'm just going to use my fabric scissors however they came out with this one this is the new rotary blade before it looked like just a little knife just in there just like how we're familiar with most cutting this one actually looks like a little rotary cutter so what this one does is it will come around at an angle well, it'll be like this but it will there's a little angle to it in right here and it will come around to your material and cut it this one just goes straight just like a regular cut this will sense how deep the material is and only cut out that deepness which this one does too but a little differently so this one it will go around cut it out you know as long as it's under three th three millimeters um it will cut it out just fine and it'll be great this one takes a little longer to cut but it gives you a better crisper cut so that's why because it's sensing okay well let's say we have this cotton material on our mat well she's gonna come and she's gonna cut and it's gonna be great however this one's gonna cut and she's gonna sense okay if i cut here this is going to give me the best crispest angle to cut and i'm not going to have any shifting if i do this so she's going to take longer because she's trying to find those best possible angles to cut which i would prefer a better cut even if it takes a few seconds longer um and you're going to have less shifting of that material so if i was doing like i said a wool or something like that i'm going to use this because it i mean wool fabric has a close weave especially a good wool fabric is gonna have a close weave to it but some don't and they're a little bit looser so like a felt or something like that if it's something bulky and i'm very nervous about it i'm gonna use my rotary blade on it because that way i know it's being as delicate as it can but giving me a good cut the only thing i always tell people keep in mind with this one is that it's not going to just go down all the way to that three millimeter thickness it's going to do one millimeter at a time so if you notice okay it cut but it didn't cut all the way through run it again so you're going to run it again and it's going to go down another one millimeter thickness so if your material is three millimeters thick well then you're going to have to run it three times but if it's only like uh not even full one or you know one and a half well then you're good um with this one you you're not going to run it again it's going to do it on the first time um but like i said this gives me such a good cut and it just it thinks like that so i'm gonna i'm gonna let it run through so i've had a lot of people who are like oh my blade's not working it is but that's why it's doing it that way um now you'll never have to run it more than three times because again it can only cut through three millimeters so if you're running it four or five times something's wrong because <laughs> you shouldn't be having to do that i think i've the most i've ever had to run mine was twice so i think it does cut a little bit more than that one uh one millimeter when it's going and it does a beautiful cut so the, the most i've had to and i was going through a thick 
thick, 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 thick material that I probably shouldn't have put in my machine. Um, I was going through something like that. So that's the only, I think that's the only reason I had to run through twice, but it's something to keep in mind that I haven't heard many people talk about. So you might be thinking you're doing something wrong. Well, no, it's just that. So I love this blade. Even with that, this is my favorite blade out of all of them. And I have all of them. Um, this one's my favorite. So for fabric, especially. I might have tried it on a bunch of other stuff. But this blade was made for things that were like lace, that were like uh, something slick, like silk. It was made for delicate fabrics. So I personally use it on pretty much all of my fabrics. Um, but it was made as a, for a specialty thing. So it's really, really cool. And I mean, the size of them difference is kind of nuts though too. Um, but yeah, I like that one. So those would be the two that you would use. Can you use your black auto blade? Can you use the... Yeah, you can, but these were specialty made for this, so it's going to give you a better cut. So if you have them, I mean, the machine comes with one of them. Depending on what model you have, You, if you have an SDX, it's going to come with one of these. Why not use the proper one, you know, in your machine? So if you have this one and you really like this one, they do sell this one separately. I mean, they sell them both separately, but this is a kit that you can get separately. Um, it's called the rotary kit. I'll put a the picture of the box on the screen because I'm a visual person. Um, you can get it separately. Do I recommend it? Absolutely. If you know you're going to cut out a lot of fabric, then I would recommend it. If you know if you're not going to cut out a lot of fabric, then, you know, kind of what's the point? But if you know you're going to cut out a lot of fabric, this is a great one to have in your arsenal. So it's kind of like uh, tricky fabrics. I like to have this in my back pocket. You know what I mean? All right. So. We've gone through that and we kind of went over the mats already. So you've got your fabric mat, your tan mat right here. Love her. So if I'm doing fabric, I'm pulling this one out because she is the stickiest one and I want my material to be stuck down on my mat so we don't have any slipping, anything crazy. Um, but if you have a CM model or if you don't have a fabric mat, you can do a standard with a high tack support sheet and I'll put it on the screen. It's just something that you roll out on it and makes it super sticky. However, with a high tack support sheet, over time your machine's gonna cut away at that high tack support sheet and it's gonna flake off. Um, and it's gonna, you know, kind of get a little gross and then you have to scrape it off, throw it away and put a new one on it. So it's, it's good and you can do it. It's just the fabric mat kind of does it all in one. So that's why I usually just use my fabric mat. All right, other things I recommend. Your brayer, if I'm doing fabric, I'm going to make sure that I am pressing that fabric on my mat and sealing it on there as best as possible. Is it necessary? No, you can do it with the back of your hand, but this just does it better. So I always have my brayer out when I'm doing fabric to make sure that it is on there. Because, I mean, really, fabric is going to be, other than you're doing like a thin balsa wood, fabric is going to be one of the, the hardest things to stick on your mat. Because, I mean, think, it's got fibers and lint and puff, you know, stuff on there. So it's going to want to slide. So a good mat, a good clean mat, clean your mats, um, and sealed on there with the brayer, it's going to be your best combo. All right. So let's actually cut some fabric out. Cause I feel like a lot of times I give information, but I'm like, no, I want you to see it. So let's cut some stuff out. Put these here. All right, so I'm going to use, put my standard over here. I'm going to use my fabric mat. There we go. Throw that on the floor. All right, so let's start with our regular cotton fabric. I'm going to put it on here. Has not been treated. It's just a regular piece of cotton fabric that I have, which we have so many things in our stash. Okay, just putting her on there. I'm going to grab my brayer, and I'm going to bray her on there. And also make sure it, you know, takes out any bubbles or anything. She's a new mat, so she's super sticky. Now, Courtney, I see that your mat, your fabric is going past your mat. It's fine. As long as it's not over these little things right here, you're good. So if you have a piece of long fabric and don't have to cut it, you can if you want. Thousand percent up to you. Whatever you want to do. All right, so let's turn our machine on. Good morning, gorgeous. So let's pick a design, any design we want to pick out. So we're going to come to patterns. I'm going to come down one because I want to go right here to my quilt blocks. I'm going to come to my quilt blocks, select which one I want. And I always tell people click around because they're always like, well, that's not many quilts available. No, each of them is just a, a header pretty much. And if you click into them, there's even more. And then you can come down and there's even more and even more. So 
definitely click around in your machine and see what you already have in there, which it's a lot. So I'm going to select this first one. It's telling me it's going to be a nine by nine when I'm done. So if I wanted to change that up it or lower it, I could right now, but I like my nine by nine block. So I'm going to hit okay. And then it's going to give me every single piece of that block. But the cool part is if you click it, it's going to show you where that particular block. So a is on our, our finished block. So that way you can get your colors kind of sorted out in your head, where things are going and all of that. So if I was to select this one over here, well, that's where that one is. Okay, well, I wanna select this one right here. Okay, well, those, that's where those are. So I'm gonna select this first one and hit okay. Now it even tells me what size that particular um, piece is because it's already generated since it knows that we want a nine by nine block at the end, that's how big that piece needs to be to finish that out. And it's gonna take two of those particular parts to finish our block. So we could hit, we wanted to add two more because I want to make two blocks at one time or even more Then I could do that now if I wanted to because I know it takes two of those pieces to finish out my nine by nine block. So I'm gonna hit set and then it's automatically going to lay them on my mat. If you notice, there is a outer black line and then an inner blue line. And you can kind of see it better in person. I don't know if you can see it so well on camera. Um, that blue line is my draw line. That black line is my cut line. Now, why would I want a draw line? Well, it draws your seam allowance for you because remember she can draw and she gives you a water soluble and air soluble pen to use in the machine. So it's giving you that option if you're wanting it. I love that option. I need all the help I can get to draw, uh, to sew a straight line. So I love that it draws it for me. So I'm gonna actually say, okay, I like where they put it on my mat. I could add additional parts of the block if I wanted to. I could add these and hit okay. And it's gonna add them on there. Now I could keep adding if I want them out of that fabric. If I wanted them out of a different fabric, well then I just wouldn't add those now. Or you could add them and have, if the fabric was small enough, you could do two different fabrics on your mat at one time. So we had a, a piece of fabric here and we had a piece of fabric here, they were two different colors. Well, then I could do that if I wanted to. All right, so we're gonna hit, I'm actually gonna edit. And I'm gonna delete off some of these because I don't want them. Okay, so how do you delete, Courtney? Well, you've noticed if you click one, it turns red. It turns, like it puts a red box around it. And then I would just come here to the little trash can, hit the trash can. Okay to delete the selected data. Sure, okay. And it's only gonna delete that thing that was um, selected. So I have my one, I'm gonna hit okay. Okay again, cause I don't wanna edit it any further. Please select. What do I wanna do? Do I wanna cut? Do I wanna draw? Do I wanna emboss? Do I wanna foil? There's even more options if we click down. I wanna cut. Okay, great. Now it's telling me, hey, I can't do that just yet because there's nothing in the holder. So I'm going to take this one, my rotary. Why am I taking my rotary? Because this is untreated material. It might slip a little, I don't know. I'm gonna treat it as a delicate fabric because it is untreated. Not meaning it is a delicate fabric, but I, if I have it, why not use it? So um, if you notice, all I did was take off her little cap her little protective cap, which I love these things because I have little ones running around. So if they come into mommy's sewing room and mom didn't put the things away and shut it, then they might grab onto this. Well, that's sharp. So this gives me an extra minute of them grabbing it and me being able to come by and go, no, 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 and grab it from. So protecting little hands and protecting my hands, let's be honest, because I'm just grabbing at things. So we're gonna take that little protective cap off. Now, um, if you slot it into your machine, there's little grooves right here and there's little grooves on the back of it. So that's how it tells it which one's in here. So if I had my drawing holder in there and I told it to cut, it would tell me, whoa, whoa, hold on. Can't do that, you have the wrong one in there. And vice versa, if I told it to um, draw instead of cut and I had the cut one in there, not the draw one, it would tell me the same thing. Now, if I told it to cut and I had one of these in there, it wouldn't tell me anything. It would just assume I wanted to use that one. So it takes a little bit of that user error of me out of it, which I appreciate. So we've just, so we've taken it, dropped it in there, and then you just close your little hatch. Now, if you ever feel some resistance with that, I always tell people, take it out, make sure there's nothing in there, and make debris, nothing in there from a previous project or anything, you know, and then just slip her on in there and close her on down. Um, a lot of times people haven't placed her in there fully or something like that, but honestly, it's pretty, 
pretty easy. It's hard to break them. We have our blade in there. We have our mat here with our fabric, so we're ready to go. We're going to take our mat, put it right here, and then we're going to hit this button on the side to load. And she always goes a little in, and then she comes back, and now she is properly loaded. So now if you notice, all of our things light up. Now, right, oops, wrong side, <laughs> right here, you'll notice that now there's only the black line. That blue line went away because we have cut selected right here whenever we told it what we wanted it to do. If we had selected draw, then that black line would be away and the blue line would be there because we were going to draw. So everything looks good, not worried about anything. So we are automatically going to hit start. Should have we done a test cut? Probably, am I gonna do it? No. <laughs> All right, so she's estimating one minute on there. Um, sometimes it's a little quicker in my opinion, but if you notice she's coming down and she's jumping around. And people always get nervous with this one because they're like, wait, why isn't she just going around like my other blade does? Because remember, she's finding that best cut, which I appreciate. She's trying to find the cut, oh, and she's done. <laughs> she's trying to find that best cut where she's not gonna disturb anything. All right, I've got my special tool because I should be lightly getting things off the mat with it. I'm really bad and I just tear things, you know, and pull them off because I get excited. So we're gonna unload our mat, which same button that you loaded it with. Okay, and Courtney, you just said to do, <laughs> I'm bad about that. Well, it's the outer one, it's not even the part. So, if you notice, I just pulled that off like it was nothing. Look how beautiful our cut is. It's so perfect, oh, I love it. And I always tell people, if you're quilting, and you, especially if you have additional mats, go ahead and leave it on the sticky because I am notorious for losing parts of my block and having to go look for it and you know flipping around and not being able to find it. So just leave it on your sticky mat, bring it over to your machine when you're ready to sew it out, and then it's all perfectly laid out there for you. So it's super, super handy. So I'm gonna take my little spatula tool and take my uh, design, and I'm just gonna come at the end and kind of wiggle it underneath. Why am I doing that? Well, because I want to make sure that there's there's no fraying that I create from ripping it up. I mean, this is a sticky mat. Hello. <laughs> it's a sticky mat. So I'm going to treat my fabric as nice as possible so I don't get any fraying. All right. So we've got our perfectly cut, like, I don't even know how I can show that. Perfectly, I feel like a beauty guru. There you go. Um, Perfectly cut square. I mean, look, she even has the little beveled edges right here. She's cut them for me so that way when I sew it together, that's gone. If I had drawn my seam lines, it would be drawn on there. I usually tell people, draw it before you cut it. Um, one, because it's just cool to see. But also, that way when it's cut, I mean, it's been shifted around, I would rather have it draw because I feel like drawing is going to shift it around less than cutting through it. So she has been cut out beautifully, no frayed edges. And remember, this is just our regular fabric. So in the grand scheme of it, this would technically be the hardest one and she just did it like it's butter. She just cut through it perfectly. So great, great, great. So now we have our, no, uh, where can the camera see it? I'm gonna put it here. So now we have our regular fabric and we're cutting them out all because I wanna show you all the stuff. And another cool thing is, well, I ripped it because I'm savage when I do things. So it cut it out so good out of this fabric that I could keep using this piece of fabric and cut right here, cut right here, cut right here and put it back on my mat. Since you can scan the fabric in too, I would be able to see where there was a cut out of it. And we'll do that in a minute with another piece of fabric. Um, I could see that and then that way I'm not wasting and I'm using every single bit of my fabric. If you do a lot of appliques, you know sometimes you just need a little piece of one color for one part of your applique. Well, I'm not gonna throw this away. I'm gonna keep using my scraps up so then that way I can tell my husband that I didn't waste money. I use every little bit. So, all right, so this one puts it aside. We've done that one. Let's do Tutorial Magic. Oh, and actually, perfect example. I cut out a tulip one day for one of my quilts, and I wanted my tulip to come out of this because I thought it was really pretty. So I didn't throw this away afterwards because I knew I could keep using it, keep using it, keep using it. So I'm gonna take my fabric and put it right here on mine. Now you don't have to keep going to the corner of your mat. It's such a habit to keep coming right here. And I always tell people, do as I say, not as I do, but put it on different parts of your mat so you're evenly wearing out your mat. Um, because of course, if I keep putting it in that corner, that corner is gonna wear out a lot faster than the rest of my mat, which is not what I want. So, put it on there, grabbing my brighter tool. The ends 
instinct was just to, of course, take the new piece of fabric and put it on there. But no, I think I want to use my scraps up. So we've got that on there. And I could cut out this block again if I wanted to, but I think it'd be fun to cut out something different. So let's pick something different. All right. Now this, of course, is asking us if we want to finish or do the next part of our quote block. Well, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hit home and I'm going to come to my pattern and let's pick out something fun. Let's pick out Mickey Mouse because she is a SDX 330D. So she is a Disney model. So Mickey Mouse comes in there. Oh, look at all the different ones. They're so cute. Well, let's come to the princesses. Oh, look at all the different princesses. Oh, look, the shoe and the apple. That's precious. If you were making like a Disney quilt for someone, that would be really fun. Oh, that rose is pretty. I swear, I've looked through this a million times and I still get super excited at all the different ones. Um, do we want to do the shoe? Do we want to do this crab? <laughs> I forget his name. Someone, Sebastian, Sebastian. Someone in the comments right now was probably typing Sebastian. <laughs> all right. I want to do this rose. I think that would be really fun. Okay. So we like this rose. We're going to come down here and say, okay, that's the part we want. It's going to tell us its size, remember, and tell us how many are going to be in there. So we can hit set. And it's automatically going to put it on our mat. Well, I know my fabric can handle a bigger rose than that. So I'm going to select it and come down here and hit this edit function. And then once we come here, we're going to go to object edit. And we're going to come to our resizer right here at the top. The one with the uh, arrows. All right. So now we're in our resizer tool. Now remember, the scan and cut wants to make something bigger or smaller all together. Its preset is to go all together like breathing. All together at once. All together lower. So if I was to select this, it's going to bring my design in. Now, if you notice, usually we can split it and say, hey, lock it. And I only want to do my height bigger. Or I only want to do my width bigger. But it's not giving us that right now. Why is that? Because it knows that if it was to do that, it might distort this image. And since this is a preset image in the machine, it doesn't want to distort it and know it might get funky. So that feature will not work with this design. All right. So let's go a little bit bigger. Nothing crazy. So we're going to hit OK. Do I want to do anything else to it? No, I think it's good. Hit OK again and OK again because there's nothing else I want to do to it. We're going to stop here because if you notice this feature right there, what is this feature? The one with the little mat and the bar through it. That allows you to scan in your mat to show you what is on your mat. So remember how we were using that piece of fabric that had the little bit, that, the flower that I cut out previously? Well, I want to still use that piece. So I would select this and it tells me scan the mat to show its background. Put material and scan on the mat and set it into the machine, then hit start. Well, it's not letting me hit start because my mat's not loaded. So I'm going to take my mat right here. Remember, it's got that little bit right here and it's not even in the corner. So we're going to put it into our machine, select that tool right here to scan her in or to load her in. I swear my hair is everywhere. <laughs> okay, now my mat is loaded in, so all I would have to do is hit start. And now she's gonna feed it in and go all the way through the back. So I always tell people don't put it right up against your wall, leave a little space. I mean, it's a flimsy mat, so it's not like it's gonna hurt anything. It's just gonna flip up. Um, but just a little bit of space, a little space will do. Alrighty, so she scanned in my material. All right, so now she's got our uh, scanned in image, you can see it in color, what is on our mat. And we can actually select our rose right here and drag it on over here and put it wherever we want on there. We just know, hey, that little spot right there, well, that's where I've already cut something out. So I could even make it closer and put it right here. If I wanna really use up my material, I could put it right here if I wanted to. Now remember, you can drag and drop, but if you, want, if you don't wanna do that and you wanna make it exact, you could hit edit right here, the edit function. And then you could select these, this tool right here. This right here, we select it, is our directional ones. So that way we can select and move it inch by little inch we want to and make sure it's right where we want it to be. So if you don't want to drag and drop and you want to make it exactly where you want, you could do that. If you feel like, oh, I can't see it, there is a magnifying glass right here that allows you to go up to 400%. And then, so remember, if you're wanting to move around the mat, 
and not actually move the thing on there, select these keys and these keys right here. If you're actually going to want to move whatever's on your mat, then those keys are going to be the one you use. Found that out the hard way one day. So I'm going to just scroll down on my mat. There she is. And that way I can really look, oh, how close am I to the edges? How close am I to this? And if I wanted to move them on this screen, then I can select these upper keys to do that. So everything looks good. I'm happy where her placement is. I want to use every little piece of this material. So I'm happy where it is. I mean, I could have put it all over here and used up this big piece, but why? If I have all this, I'm going to use what I have. So I'm going to select OK. OK again, because remember, we want to get to where it asks us, what do we want to do? So OK again. And now, what do we want to do? Please select. I want to cut. All right. And now she is ready to cut. And if you notice, everything else goes away because it wants you just to be able to see her cut. So we've got our rotary still in there. I still want to use that one. And it's estimating it's going to take nine minutes. Wow, Courtney, that's really long. Yeah, because it's a very detailed one and it wants you to be able to get the most precise cut. So I'm okay with that. And we're going to go ahead and hit start. Now she's coming down, she's sensing. If you notice, she's only had to cut once through these materials because they're not thick materials, they're super thin. So like I said, you're not gonna have to cut multiple times very much if at all, but it's something to be aware of because I don't want you to think it's you when it's something else, so. All right, I'll put that there because we're gonna use it. We're gonna properly use the spatula. We're not just gonna rip it off. I'm probably gonna just rip it off. All right, well that's cutting out. Let's go ahead and go over this. So. This is our treated fabric. Remember, we treated it with heat and bond, but you could do like a wonder under, you could do a hot fix. It's really whatever you want to treat your fabric with. The machine doesn't know. The machine knows, do you want me to cut through all of this? Do you want me to cut through half of this? Half cut, remember, is when we cut out vinyl. You know, we want half of that. So with fabric, I don't want to do a half cut. I want to cut through the whole thing. So we're not even messing with half cut right now. So. Again, we're gonna do fabric side down on the mat and cut out this way. The machine won't care that it has the paper backing. It doesn't know. Now, I don't remember, I don't remember if I explained how to use Terial Magic. So Terial Magic is just a liquid. So it's in a little spray container. Um, you can get the ones that don't have the top on them if you're getting like the big jug and just refill your small jug or one of yours that you have at home. Um, spray bottle pouring, not a jug. So what you do is just a regular cotton piece of material. This has already been treated, but you take it and you put it on something. I usually get like a cardboard box or something that I don't care gets kind of gross. Um, and you take your fabric and you put it in there one sheet at a time, so one ply. I guess you could do multiples, but I like to make sure it's saturated, so I usually do one ply. And then you take it and you spray it down. Make sure that it's good and wet, and you kind of you can crinkle it up and you know make sure it's really saturated. And then you leave it out to dry um, while it's still wet. You leave it to dry somewhere. I usually take them and I put them uh, either on my cutting table. If I'm not using my cutting table, like this table, I'll just come and like lay them all out to dry. Or sometimes if it's really wet and I'm doing a big batch, I'll go in my bathroom and put them on my sink or in my shower, like on the uh, edge of the bathtub or something like that. And I'll just put them in there like that and let them dry. And then once they dry, it takes a little while because they're wet wet. Um, once it's pretty much dry, then I'll come take it to my uh, ironing board and then you give them a nice iron and that flattens them out and gets all that crease out because it's a heavy duty starch and it lays it out. Now, of course, you can of course saturate them that like where they're really, really like standing up on their own, but you can use it sparingly too. So you could also just spray it a little bit um, and then hit it with your iron. That's not going to make it as strong of a hold, but if you're not wanting a super strong hold, then you can do it like that too. Now, if you're ironing and you notice that, um, like if you didn't wait for it to dry completely, because I mean, it doesn't take too long, but they, I think, recommend at least 10 minutes before ironing it. Um, it, it'll give like a slight little sizzle, you know? Um, it's fine, it's not gonna hurt anything, but I usually let mine dry. I'm usually doing large batches too. I let mine dry for quite a while, and then I go and iron it. So that is how you use Terial Magic. I really like Terial Magic with my scanning cut because again, I'm traveling around with this fabric. If I just had regular cotton fabric in my bag, it would fray over time. It's a regular cotton fabric. Um, Material Magic just kind of helps me with that. So that is something I do. All right, she is done cutting, so we're gonna unload. 
we're going to be good and we're going to take our spatula. Like it's crazy. It doesn't even look like it cut, right? It's nuts. All right. So we know it cut over here. So I'm going to take my spatula and I like how I'm like, just kind of letting my spatula, I'm pulling with this hand. <laughs> All right. We're going to come and we're going to be gentle because she, we know she was a gentle cut thing. Oh my goodness, it's coming out so good. Oh, that's so cool. Alrighty, now, there she is. Very, I mean, like, look how perfect that stem is. But I'm going to actually come take my picking tool that I usually use for vinyl, and I'm gonna come here just like if I was doing vinyl, and I would pick out the parts that I don't want. So pick out the parts of the inner part of the flower. I'm gonna come here and pick out the parts I don't want. You don't have to do this. I could just take my spatula and kind of wiggle my way under the fabric, which I might actually do. Wiggle my way under the fabric, um, and those other parts would just fall off. But if you want to see your design before you get it off the mat, that's something you could do. So if you notice, I've come over here to this part, and I'm starting down here. Why am I starting down here? Because I know that that is a delicate part that I can start with um, and try not to disturb anything because I really, really don't want to. If now it is, since it is a delicate image, um, material magic's great because if this was the cotton one well the cotton would of course want to be fraying while I'm gently trying to get it off of the sticky mat so material magic I mean there's tons of different starches out there so just use which one you want material magic's just the one that I use so I'm going to keep wiggling to get her off of my knot now the cool thing about this is that um if you have a good like heat and bond or whatever you could make an applique quilt or applique for a shirt out of any material in the machine or any of them that you bring in because remember scan and cut we can bring things in um so you could make a applique out of anything and then just do like a little stitch around it if you wanted to um and then i mean sky's the limit with all the appliques that you could do and you don't have to buy a design buying designs are fun let's be honest i'm a hoarder i love buying designs um but you don't have to if you don't want to Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I feel like I need to hold it up to the camera so you can see it. It's so cute. It's a little bitty rose. Oh my goodness. That came out so good with all of its little petals and everything and little leaves and it's all attached. Like, oh my God, it's so cute. So if I had, had this treated with something, I like how I'm like holding it like a baby. If I had this treated with something, then I could just make that applique out of it. Um, but this was just material magic, so I think it's cool. I'm holding it like this because it's got so many delicate cuts to it. I think it's so neat, but like I could just hold it by its little thing. I don't think it likes me being hold, holding it like that, but that's something that I could do. So we're gonna put her here. I like how we're just collecting all the things we've got. It's so cute. Now our mat's getting a little gross because we've been cutting things on it. So I'm actually just gonna, another good thing about your spatula tool is um, cleaning your mat off and just getting all the little bits. You don't gotta get everything off, but it's, it's a nice practice <laughs> to get the stuff off of your mat um, in between cuts. So I still have a lot of fluff from that cutout on here. I don't know if you can see it. And it makes my mat just a little bit less sticky, but it's not hurting anything. So. I'm going to take my treated fabric with that heat and bond on there. Take that, get my brayer. We're cutting all the things out today. There we go. And my hair. There we go. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm not like pressing on there, which I mean, if your mat was getting way less sticky than you could, I'm just making sure that it's on there. So there we go. Perfect. All right. So before I load in the machine, let's pick what we're going to cut. Let's cut something different. There we go. And we're going to go to pattern. We're going to come here and let's cut out something fun. Say I was making a quilt and I wanted it to have stars and moons. If I was doing like a little space quilt for someone. If I was doing a little flower quilt for a little girl or something like that, I could. If I was doing a Christmas one, snowflakes all over there on my board. I've done that a few times. So there's just so much built into your machine. You can cut anything out that you want um, and make it into something for applique. So hmm, those are cute. Let's see what these, these are our holiday ones. So again, if we were doing a holiday quilt. Now, since Valentine's Day is coming up, how cute would this be with the birds? That's kind of cute. Let's see. 
I'm gonna cut out this little flower. I think she's cute. So if I wanted to put it on an applique, I would hit okay. Okay again, set, and now it's on here. Now, just like before, nothing special we need to do. So we're gonna hit okay, please select, and we want to cut. We've done this so many times, you guys are gonna be pros. All right, so let's load our mat, the same concept, and I'll just stay on this screen so you can see the exact button. This button right here. Select that one to load in our mat. We could scan it in, but I know my mat's not gonna have any, I mean, my fabric was big, so it's not gonna have any issues. So we're gonna hit start, and there she goes. Seriously, guys, y'all are gonna be pros after this with how to cut fabric. You're gonna be like, I cut this fabric this time, this kind, and this kind. It's super easy. Once you know how to do it, you're golden. So that's cutting out. I love our little collection of things. So we've cut untreated fabric, just regular cotton fabric. We've cut fabric with Tyrion Magic, so like a heavy starch in it. We're cutting out fabric that is for uh, an applique. Now I do wanna say, since you're having to flip it where fabric side down, if it was a directional item, we're just doing a flower. But if it had been a directional item where we wanted to make sure that that image, say we did a puppy dog, I wanna make sure the puppy dog's facing this way. Well then you would just flip the image um, in your machine. But since ours was a flower, I don't need to flip it. It's already, it's fine. <laughs> it's non-directional. Okay. <laughs> And she's done. She was like, here you go. So we're gonna unload her. Courtney, use your spatula. No. So, since she cut it out so perfectly, I could keep using this and using this and using this however much I want. All right, spatula tool. Gonna come underneath here. Oh my goodness. This is so cool. I'm just... <laughs> All right, and it even has a little bit inside. How perfect. How perfect. The paper's still on there, so I don't have to peel off the paper if I don't want to yet. But look, it's so perfect. All right, so I'm gonna flip it on its back, say, okay, I'm ready for my applique to go on my shirt. Well, I'm going to take it and peel off that paper backing. And look, I mean, this is still perfect. And now I have this, that shiny spark, which is the glue. Um, and I'm gonna put that glue side down on my shirt or whatever it was. Um, and then take an iron, heat it up. It's gonna heat up that glue and that wonder, I'm um, sorry, that heat and bond light, and it's going to adhere it to whatever I want. And I've just made fast, easy applique. Now, if you trust your product, you trust whatever the product is that you're using, heat and bond light, wonder under, hot fix, hot fix is awesome. Um, then you don't have to do a stitch around, but if you want to do a stitch around, you can now come around and do a stitch around. Unless you have a designated stitch, like if it was an actual applique file, then you put it down where it told you to put it down, and now it's gonna go back and do your satin stitch. So there's no more having to get applique scissors and having it, you know, I don't, I don't do applique scissors, my hands cannot. Um, there's no more having to go around this image to cut it out and then cutting out that center, how in the world? I wouldn't have done it. I would have just maybe skipped that part. <laughs> but now, um, now I can have a detailed applique like how we did our rows and I didn't have to use scissors to cut that out. The machine cut it out for me. Now, since she is a brother machine, she can read PES files. Um, so if you have an applique, you could just send it over to it wirelessly, or she does have a USB on this part, a USB port. So you could put in your appliques with a USB, pull up your applique and have her cut them out, which is really, really, really cool. Probably one of the coolest features. All right, so we're gonna add this to our stash. Throw those away. So we're gonna add that to the things that we've cut. All right, lastly, I wanna cut out some cork fabric. Nothing special, just regular cork fabric. And I'm gonna put it down on here. Now, if you haven't, if you haven't noticed, I have not cleaned my mat not once. Um, I've kind of like taken off the bits with this, but I haven't like sprayed it down and like cleaned it at all. So, I mean, it's these fabric mats are awesome, and they just keep going and going. Now, if you're doing a very delicate uh, applique or very delicate image like this one then it might be best to have it on a dirty mat and it not be its full stickiness because then that way when you're getting it off, it's not gonna wanna accidentally tear at all if it's an untreated fabric. So not always have to have the stickiest thing out there. 
Um, sometimes having a non-sticky one's good too. So I'm loading that. We haven't even picked a design. I'm ahead of myself. Alrighty, so we're gonna hit okay. Okay, now I wanna come back home right here. Okay. Alrighty, so let's go to pattern. And let's come here. Uh, let's come down to this one. I just always want to cut something different. Oh, hoo -hoo, let's cut this Florida Lee. <laughs> I am from Louisiana, so Florida Lee. All right, if I want to change the size, make it any bigger, make it smaller, I want to make it a little bit bigger. Here we go. And hit OK. OK again. It's going to be that size. OK. All right, there she is on our mat. But again, we could move it anywhere we want it to. We don't have to always do it in the corner. So I'm going to actually bring it over here just because I can. Hit OK. Please select. What do we want to do? We want to cut. All right, everything looks good. And we're going to hit start. Now, if you've ever worked with a cork material, you know that that's, some, that's a thick material. And there's nothing special that I had to do because auto blade. Auto blades are awesome. There's no having to tell it, hey, I have this certain material, this certain width, this certain, there's none of that. There's no presets that I have to do. There's no pressure settings I need to do, no cut blades I need to know because it's an auto blade. It automatically is going to do that for you. So auto blade, auto blade, auto blade. It's really, really cool. It's probably, honestly, when people were like, Courtney, what is the difference with all these different machines, uh, cricket silhouettes and all that? The fact that you could scan in your own image offline, no, you don't have to pay for anything. You just print out a picture of something, scan it in, or send it straight if you're working on Canvas, um, send it straight to Canvas, and then you can turn that into a cut file is really cool. But also, Autoblade's really cool. So there's nothing that I need to know about the material other than, hey, I'll put it on my mat and go. <laughs> so that's really cool. Now, speaking of Canvas, we did do two videos on Brother Canvas, just a quick overview, um, part one and part two. So there's two different videos. I saw some comments where people were like, on part two, they were like, wait, did I miss something? Yes, there's a whole other video that's uh, part one on our channel. Um, and then there's part two, just because there's so much with Canvas. I can't fit it all in one video. Um, I could, but it'd be a very long video. So we broke it up into two parts. So definitely check out those videos. Um, and like I said, we've already done a whole quilt on the channel we've done appliques so I actually brought in an applique that I had into the machine one that I paid for um, and had it cut it out and we did it from start to finish so we stitched out the applique and everything oh you're done let's unload um, on there we've done paper we've done so many different projects on there so definitely check out all of those videos if you type in uh, on our channel or if you look on our channel all of my videos are called all rinse after hours with me because I do these after my kids go to sleep so it's after normal hours all right I'm just pulling Courtney use your spatula no <laughs> all right we're just pulling it off I mean it's a tough fabric it'll be fine now the fact that again it cut it out so perfectly I could keep using all these little bits. Cork's expensive. I'm gonna cut costs where I can. All right, we're taking our spatula tool and we're gonna be good. We're going to just wiggle her underneath to get her off. So like I said, tons of videos on there. Um, sometimes I'll get questions that's like, hey, how do I do this? And I'm like, oh, I need to start, let's stop getting stuck to this thing is one thing I need to do. But I need to just um, start linking those videos. Cause like I said, they're project-based videos where you can see me do an actual project from start to finish, um, which are kind of my favorite videos. The informational videos are good too, but I love a good project. I'm a, I'm a person that likes to see things. So those are really, really handy. Now and you can tell how sticky this mat is. <laughs> All right, there we go. So like I said, usually uh, a lot of times there's project videos that we've already done uh, going through something. All right. so. There she is. There's our little, let me put it down here. It's easier to see. There's our little cork floor to Lee. How cute is that? And guys, remember you could do an applique with any material. So if I wanted to add this to an applique, the cork, how cool would that be if I wanted to do that? Um, if I wanted to add this to um, my tree, say I had my Christmas tree and I wanted to make it a Mardi Gras tree because I'm in Louisiana. I could just have it cut out a little hole and now I've made little cork ornaments. Um, it's really sky's the limit, whatever you want to do, but now you can cut out this thick material with your brother's scanning cut. So we've cut out 
Oh, we've been on a journey. My poor mat, she is very dirty. I don't know if you can tell. Um, I'm going to have to give her a good clean. I might not. I might just, I might not clean. <laughs> All right, so let's go over the things we've cut. We started with our regular piece of cotton fabric. Nothing special, just a regular piece of cotton fabric. We went over to our, I'm gonna just hold her like this again. <laughs> we went over to our Tyrion Magic fabric and cut this beautiful uh, rose out. We went over and did some heat and bond light treated fabric like this, cut her out beautifully. And then we did our Florida Lee. We did our cork Florida Lee. I mean, there's really sky's the limit of material and things that you can do in this machine. These are just some examples that you can do. But again, three millimeter thickness, so puffy foam, whatever, felt, uh, wool. I've done a ton of that and it did beautifully. Um, again, a fabric mat. You know what? If it's a delicate wool or a delicate one, maybe a dirty fabric mat might be your best friend because it's not going to be as sticky. Or you might want to try that on the standard, but I still want to make sure it has a good hold. And then you can, of course, do it with your rotary blade right here, um, but you also have the option of doing it with your uh, tan blade, your fabric blade. So those are going to be your best friends for cutting out material. So. I hope that answered just a few of your questions that you had on the Brothers Scan and Cut cutting out fabric. Like I said, there's so many things to cut out and it's really, really simple, guys. It's so simple. You saw us cut out four different things. These are just a few of the different things that you can cut out. Um, if you can fit into the machine, I usually say try it. What's the harm? Um, if you're our tech, you did not see me say that. But <laughs> it, it's really cool and they're just fun. So try to cut out some fabric. Have some fun. It's super, super easy and it does a beautiful cut. I mean, it's just perfect cuts. Um, so try some stuff out and have some fun. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below because I love answering your questions. If you have ideas for upcoming videos that you would like to see, of course, leave those down there too. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I am determined that we are going to get to 10,000 subscribers this year. I, it's my personal goal, but thank you so much for everyone that's left comments. I enjoy reading them. Thank you for liking these videos and sharing them. I've had a couple of people that reach out to me and say, hey, my friend shared this video and I've always had this question, so thank you for answering that. That makes me feel super happy because I am here to teach. I love to teach, so thank you so much for that. Y'all have a great night. Come back next week. We'll be having some more fun projects. Bye.